Pam has to go on. Get has to come in when I start talking to you guys. Go. Uh, go. Okay. Sorry about that. Stay. So. <laughs> All right, take two. We're going to do this over. Get! Hey, everybody. So, Chuck, outside Screwball. Thanks for stopping by my shop for a visit. It's another Screwy Tuesday. Uh, another episode of Tool Time. We're going to keep going on with Tool Time. Uh, so, and, and tonight's uh, going to be quite a bit of video on new tool purchases that I uh, just recently did. And uh, it's early in the week. I hope to get a little machining in, but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. The, uh, as you can see, my uh, bandsaw behind here. Uh, got a little work to do. I was doing a quick little job the other day and, and uh, decided to turn the RPM up to 3,000 uh, on the blade speed. And uh, that was a little too much and blew a tire. <laughs> so I got to... Uh, get back in here and, and uh, wrestle that tire back on there. Um, other things that have occurred in the shop is, as you know, I built uh, fingers for my uh, Diarco finger break, and I still had to finish the little clips that uh, hold the uh, fingers into the unit, and I got all that done, and I'll show you a photo of uh, all the fingers in place, but did that the other night. Um, you know, nothing uh, dramatic on the uh, on the uh, build of these little pieces. Um, did use my new anvil mic for fine and center. Um, throw you a little picture of that too, probably. And uh, glad I got that done. So, uh, my buddy up in Oregon, Donald Cossett, um, if you watch his channel, it's a nice channel, he does some really nice things, great guy, and we've become friends. Uh, well, he purchased a uh, grinder the other day, and uh, happened to be green, and I've been green with envy ever since I saw it. Beautiful grinder. So I've been on the hunt, uh, looking for a grinder, and uh, I saw one on Craigslist the other day, and... Uh, put in the call and off I went uh, running and uh, so I'll show you the grinder uh, I'm actually give you a little tour of my grinders first um, that I have prior to this purchase and uh, I think this satisfied my uh, grinder envy I should be okay for a while um, and then uh, why I was there the uh, it was a machinist and of course I got to ask him what else you selling and uh, he, he was moving out of the San Jose area. His uh, mill and lathe and everything else was already gone. Uh, so uh, he dug around his toolbox and, uh, and in his garage. And uh, I bought a couple other items. And I will uh, show you those also. So again, uh, thanks for stopping by. And uh, hope you enjoy the video. Well, to uh, show you my other new tool I bought, I uh, thought I'd do a handheld inventory of uh, grinders that I have here. So this one's out in my main shop. And it's got my wire wheel that I use primarily for cleaning. And then it has a, uh, a grinding wheel on it also. Nice unit. Um, runs smooth. Um, been real happy with it. Uh, on the list to build a nice stand for it. And if we head over here, I've got this guy which is a uh, Baldor um, and I've got it set up with a buffer on one side and a uh, deburring wheel on the other and uh, this works out real well it's a uh, 3450 um, and uh, I'm real happy with this unit works real well great stand So let me move over to the machine shop. So here's another grinder I've had for some years. And uh, manufacturer is a Dial, D-I-E-H-L, but it's made by the Singer Manufacturing Company. Quite an old unit, and uh, I use this for touch-ups. It's got uh, a, a fine and a coarse stone, uh, three-quarter inch. And uh, 
this little guy runs like a sewing machine. Been really happy with it. It's been a useful, useful grinder here in the shop. And as you can see, I set it up on top of this cabinet, so it's uh, at my visual range. And then right behind it is my uh, tool grinder. It's got a green wheel on one side, and I've got a diamond wheel on the other. But let me show you the uh, new addition to the shop. Go over there and uh, take a peek. Well, here's my new uh, addition and purchase for the shop. Really excited about it. It's a uh, older unit on a cast iron base. Um, if you recall, my uh, fully uh, belt grinder was in that corner, which I just sold and uh, replaced it with this, and it just fits perfect there. Um, one inch wide wheels. It's got a uh, fine wheel and a soft wheel. It's located right here next to my mill. And uh, this one's uh, really a nice unit. It's an older Delta and um, it's a uh, 1725 RPM and it's got uh, lighted visors, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, dual lights in each visor. So this one, uh, both light bulbs are good and this one I got a bad light bulb in it. And uh, honestly I have to figure out uh, if it's 110 volt or 12 volt. It looks like a 12 volt unit, but I don't think it is being that old. But it uh, really works nice and I've got uh, new glass ordered for the, uh, for the visors. Uh, so super addition to the shop, really, really happy with it. All right, I'll show you some other, uh, the other uh, tool that I bought. This is uh, one of the other tools I purchased. Uh, it's a, a Norton uh, multi-oil stone. Uh, the part number is an IM313, and it's for uh, sharpening knives. And uh, I've never been able to sharpen a knife in my life <laughs> very well. And uh, what this has is three stones in it with an oil bath below. And you can rotate the stones, three different uh, grits on the stones. Um, I'm not going to show sharpening knives. There's a couple of nice videos on YouTube that are professional and much better than I would ever show. But uh, I have to tell you, really happy I picked this guy up. Paid uh, 20 bucks for it. Um, it's a great addition, and I've been sharpening knives around the house here for the last couple of days. Well, when I went to purchase the grinder, uh, it was a machinist, and uh, of course I had to ask him what else he had for sale, and ended up buying uh, this. Uh, it's made by Pratt & Whitney, and it's called the Hokey brand, I guess that's the pronunciation, Hokey, H-O-K-E, Checkmate Precision Gauge Blocks. And um, I had never seen these before, and uh, this set is the... Uh, 1030-F um, certification from 1967 and uh, interesting enough uh, here's the uh, purchase order was still in there from 1967 that uh, showed that they uh, added uh, items to the standard set which were down here and that was all of these guys over over here that were added so it's a gauge block set um, basically they're, I think they're 950,000 square blocks. And uh, basically the full sets here, other than I'm missing the 300,000. Um, and uh, the, the uh, I, I, like I said, I didn't know much about these. Um, these have rods uh, that, uh, whoops, there you go, Chuck. Uh, that you can pull apart and extend and these rods are for uh, putting the blocks together there's screws and so the rods would go through the center of the blocks to put the blocks together now these blocks can be rung together and held um, this is a uh, base that's uh, you can go ahead and have the rod and so you can stand it up on the base the base is a half inch thick and uh, there's multiple different attachments uh, with radiuses, there's a scriber, there's a center point. Um, interesting enough, uh, I'm trying to find out a little more information on this since I'm not that familiar with it. Uh, I went to Pratt & Whitney and they had a, uh, 
technical paper on it. Uh, and interesting in reading it, uh, it says the uh, these gauges are delivered with a coating of rust-proof grease. And basically, these it, what looks like rust on these is basically the grease. Um, it's like these these units have never been uh, really used at all from 1966. Uh, so uh, excited to have it in the shop. Um, it says uh, says here that the uh, these gauge blocks are certified accurate to plus six millionths minus two millionths of an inch. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be getting that exacting here in my shop, but uh, it's a real nice addition to the shop and. Uh, uh, I'm kind of uh, excited that I got this edition. I'm mumbling now. So anyway, that's about all I can add to it. If anybody can uh, uh, add any information to it, love to hear about it. I, I understand how to use these. I do not understand how to use that guy. Um, so if somebody could help me with how that, that one would be used for measuring, uh, that would be helpful. It has uh, thumb screws that attach for the rods, and of course you have the the uh, angle head screw that goes into the bottom of them. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed that. Well, uh, just a little more information. Uh, one, I'm working on uh, the young lad there that he gets used to the shop door being open and not wanting to go off and chase things. But uh, I just wanted to talk about this. Um, as you know, the uh, radius uh, wheel dresser that I bought the other day, some of the thumb screws were broken in the delivery. And I just wanted to share the product. I think a lot of people know about these, but some guys don't. Um, this is the, the product line, Shearlock thumb screw knobs. And basically, as you can see here in the picture, uh, they they basically go on an allen head so all you do is press it onto an allen head screw and you end up with a thumb knob and they make uh, quite a variety of uh, different type this hap this set happens to be um, metric but you can see that they have T handles uh, they have larger knobs like that um, and they uh, s there's a smaller knob um, and then your regular regular round knobs also. It's a great, great uh, setup if you need to make uh, thumb screws. Uh, search them out, and uh, they're not that expensive to buy. Um, just happen to have a whole kit here that happens to be metric, and then I have a bunch of uh, inch size also. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Well, I've been uh, working on getting this wheel cleaned. Um, you can see down below the, the debris coming off. So I've been using a wire wheel on the drill and, and basically holding the, holding the wheel and cleaning that way and then also uh, using a scraper to uh, get excess uh, buildup off the wheel. And uh, it's working well. Wheel's pretty well clean now. And uh, let me show you how I'm cleaning up the tire. Well, this is the back side of the tire where you could see where the adhesive was. And so what I was actually doing is using the, uh, the wire wheel. And you can see it's cleaning it up really well. And then uh, I think I'll do the same thing to this side and get the gunk off of that. Just uh, using the, uh, the wire wheel there on the grinder. Let me give it a shot and I'll be back. Well, you can see the wire wheels cleaning up all the buildup on the blade. So I'll continue on with that. Correct that. All the buildup on the tire from the blade. Well, it's always a fight, but uh, got the uh, tire back on the bandsaw.
So uh, I took it over to the mill, cleaned up the saw edge since I had a factory edge on this side. And now this is my second cut that I'll do. And uh, I used the magic marker, the large magic marker, to uh, put the red on there. And of course, uh, when I hit it with a little WD-40 during the cut, and now it wants to bleed and you end up with red hands. Uh, I know better, but anyway, so another saw cut and then back to the mill to uh, get uh, both sides parallel. Okay, well I got the, the uh, blank squared up and it's to the large dimension in that, in that, uh, that plane. So um, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and set this bar back in the mill and then we'll cut both of these, uh, call them rabbits, <laughs> steps. Uh, we'll get those cut and then we'll uh, turn it over and hold it in the vise and cut that guy. And then uh, I still got to do the uh, radius on, it, on the individual parts. But we'll, uh, we'll get to that. Okay, so the backside cut here is 540 thousandths in, 175 thousandths in depth. Uh, so we'll go ahead and touch off on the depth. I'm probably going to have to move you once it starts coming this direction. Ice is tight. Go down the seat just a hair. to move you. In frame? Eh, almost in frame. Now let me do some checking and uh, measuring. So since it's a uh, three-quarter inch cutter, just with the DRO moved over three-quarter inches to get to the other side of the uh, line or the other side of the uh, cutter, and then the uh, 368 I needed and gave myself a little so I can come back and clean.
I realize I'm fine cutting on this. Do a little measuring and see where I'm at. Okay, first part's machined there. You can see it fits the uh, template, so uh, turn it over and uh, cut the slot now. Okay, so we have it upside down now in the uh, vise, and we need to cut this slot. And that slot's 368 also. So take the uh, three quarter inch end mill out and put a uh, quarter inch uh, end mill in to go ahead and make the uh, cut and then just slide over to make the slot. Helps if you hit the out button when you want it out. Huh. Okay, let me get some measuring done and we'll get to work. Don't know if my camera shut off or not, but making a quarter inch slot uh, through the part there and then I uh, will offset each side to create the 368 slot. So that depth of cut there is 177 thousandths. It's a uh, three, three flute uh, end mill. Well, that's what happens when you rush things. Mr. Bozo comes in for a visit. I think that's in focus there. Well, you can see I cut that slot too deep. So, just uh, just wasted that part. I guess I get to start over again. Um, yeah, I went in the house to watch my son and then uh, got a few minutes to come out and work and went at it real fast and hello Mr. Bozo. Oh well, bring you back when I do it next time. We'll pick it up someplace from here, I think. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Well, as you can see in the background, I went at it again and uh, it's finished. It's fixed uh, correctly. So Mr. Bozo, if you want to come back over for a few minutes, I will give you the other part and you can put it where the sun doesn't shine. But anyway, right? Right, Howie? Come on, Howie. What'd you say? So anyway, we're going to, uh... Yeah, I know. I know, Howie. We're going to we're gonna continue on. And, uh... Uh, the next thing to do is start, uh... Piecing, uh, off the parts. Uh, drilling holes. And then, uh, set up the rotary table for the radiuses. So, uh... That's it for now, and I think it'll be on the next video as uh, we progress on this. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, if you see Mr. Bozo, kick him in the nuts for me. Wanna go for a walk? Huh? Wanna go for a walk? Huh? What do you say? Wanna go? Is that it? Is that it? Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Uh, okay. Let's go.